good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's session, HIV self-testing, a view from the front lines in our provincial alliance. My name is Eric Peters, Manager of Health Promotion at the GMSH, and I'll be moderating this session. Also sharing these duties will be my co-moderator, Greg Owens, an alliance member in our GMSH network, will be monitoring the time and the chat feature. To allow for an uninterrupted flow, each panelist will present for 10 minutes in the chronological order, followed by the Q&A. So for our audience, we ask that you write your questions in the chat and we'll get to them as in the order in which they've come in. So without further ado, here are the panelists who will share their experiences and how Getakit has been integrated into the work through a community engagement lens around access, support, uptake with the kits and linkage to care. So without further ado, up first, Alexandra Mustin. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. I co-lead uh, the HIV self-testing project called Get a Kit with Dr. Patrick O'Byrne from the University of Ottawa. Uh, Patrick is the principal investigator, and if you saw the session this morning, the clinician mind behind Get a Kit. Uh, I've been really focused on the implementation tasks uh, and support resources for hub sites. Um, and so today I'm hoping to give you a, a brief overview of our approach to that, uh, some of the what we've learned and the adaptations that we've made to get a kit that hopefully makes it a valuable tool for helping people get access to HIV self-testing in Ontario. So initially, uh, get a kit expanded from a small collaboration in Ottawa to about 13 sites uh, located across the province with a few more coming online in the next month or so. Uh, and when we were essentially franchising, we really had to drill down what is get a kit. Uh, to mail out of HIV self-testing, yes, but as of November 2nd, people could order directly from the manufacturer. So what were we offering? Uh, for the individual, what it really came down to was free HIV self-test kits. Uh, again, this morning's session, I think the number floating around is around $50 for it from the manufacturer, and that's a bit of a high price uh, to be paying out of pocket. Um, the kit also comes in sort of a discrete shipping box. And we're really proud of the design of this box. It folds out to a workstation to help organize the components of the kit. But I think the part that we really want to talk about today is the local resources that are available for an every package. So um, these are like the regional supports and, and linkage to care. And, and this last piece is really critical because it really relies on us working closely with local partners to be able to put together something that's reflective of the reality of that region. So whenever we approached a new site with every implementation, we started more or less with the same few questions. The first one was, how are you? <laughs> a lot of the sites that we were first engaging with, we were in our like second lockdown, COVID was turning our world upside down. And I think we really wanted to get a sense of, are your doors even open? Are you guys working from home? Are clients coming in person? What are you guys doing? What's your workload, your capacity? Like, and it just felt like a very human way of starting the conversation. How are you? Uh, so we learned a lot about adaptations that were being made, uh, different strategies that were being implemented to reach out to people. Again, all really helpful. And, and, and the piece here was that we really just wanted to make sure that Get a Kit worked in line with what was already being done and not on top of what was already being done. So our next big question was uh, their, ex their experience previously with HIV point of care testing. A lot of sites um, had already had like pop-up testing uh, nights or they were working with local clinics, with public health unit to offer testing to their clients. And again, HIV self-testing for us was, was mapped along the same components. You get a positive test, you have confirmatory testing, you go to a clinic, if you have a negative test, there are other conversations to have around PrEP and other HIV prevention or harm reduction. Like it's the opening to two different discussions, both of which are really important. And so we wanted to know um, how often our, or the previous experience having those conversations. Uh, of course, this segued into um, how close a relationship a site would have with a clinic. Um, again, in a lot of cases, there was a good connection between clinics and ASOs. When there wasn't, we just made a quick intro or re-intro. We offered the clinic a lunch and learn so that they knew what Get a Kit was. And this also sort of uh, pointed to the, the fact that we really didn't want there to be a chance that 
uh, someone would hit the, what, someone who had self-tested would walk through a door looking for help. And the answer would be, wait, what? Like we really wanted to make sure that people at least knew that there was a, a project that was happening in the area and that self-testing was something that was, that was making the rounds. So this also worked for PrEP as well. We wanted to learn um, what the uh, site had done in, in terms of like PrEP assessment, their connection with a PrEP provider, and, and if there were any gaps and there wasn't typically, we just made some intros. So um, you can imagine that these conversations were really rich. We learned a ton. And, and again, especially those, those early sites that we were engaging with, this really helped shape our training. Um, and so that we could uh, make sure that we were hitting the points that were the real uh, like gaps and refreshers that were needed for sites. And we weren't just either repeating information they already knew and that they felt comfortable with offering um, HIV self-testing. Um, and this also helped us develop additional resources, both for sites and for clients, just kind of bridge any gaps, give language for people to be able to talk about um, or answer frequently asked questions. So once the site is launched, we keep in touch on a monthly basis. Um, and this is where we really discuss barriers and any issues that either the staff or clients are having when trying to get um, either in engaging with Get-A-Kit um, or signing on. We're happy to talk about successes too, but we find we learn a lot more if we know what's not going right. Um, and so the three pieces that I'm gonna highlight here, and this is not in any order of importance. Um, the first one is language barriers. So we're really pleased to to say that get -A -Kit is now available in English, French, Spanish, and simplified Chinese. And we're working on uh, a one pager or like a postcard that has just a, like a brief uh, um, check-in about where you can get more information in multiple other languages. Um, we also really started to understand uh, that communications capacity really varies uh, and the importance of internal communication. So to support internal communications, we have a monthly get a kit newsletter that goes out to sites. Uh, and that's really about saying like, this is the new web development that you should be aware of. Um, these are some comms communications tips that you think that we think might be helpful. And uh, you know, these are events that you think that we think might be really helpful for you guys to know about like this conference. So um, that also shapes our agendas for check-ins. So we just wanna make sure that everyone's in the know. The other piece, of course, is uh, the data, no, sorry, not the data, the social media assets library that we have. So we have a coordinator that um, has a calendar, um, drafts uh, different messaging and sites can go to the Google Drive and download them. And that's, again, not to be pushy, but just to give a hand if, if you needed a little, piece, a little extra boost for promotion. So the last one that I'll talk about, which is probably the most, uh, I think most critical and, and, and the most uh, impact focused um, was that web-based registration for get a kit is a very high barrier for most clients. And to be fair, we knew this going in, there are reasons why we had it that way, but we did take advantage of these early conversations with sites to start mapping out, okay, how are we going to be lowering those barriers? And so what it really comes down to is a, about four different ways that you can register for get a kit. So there's the, mail out web-based. So it's me at home, at my computer. I'm comfortable registering on my own. I can validate an email or an SMS text. I'm also comfortable for that kit to be mailed to my house. Highest barrier. The next one is curbside. Me at my home, registering, still making those validations. But I don't want the kit to come to my house because I live with my parents, my roommates, my partner, et cetera. I want it to go to the ASO or the other house that's offering um, get a kit. The next lower one is on-site registration. I don't have a computer. I don't wanna register at home. I wanna to go to the site, use their device, and then have the kit in hand once I'm finished that process. And then the final and lowest barrier is what, what we call manager mode. That's paired with a paper assessment. And this is really for individuals who can't satisfy any of the requirements for registration. And then the staff at the ASO or, or the, I'm trying to, ASO is an inclusive term, but it, where it's not only ASOs that are acting as GAC hubs, I just want to note, but they're the staff at the, at the Get A Kid Hub is taking responsibility uh, for the account and, and really helping that client navigate every step. Um, so you can imagine as we start lowering barriers for participants, we start increasing the administrative responsibilities of the staff. So each of those steps is just built in with a check-in just to make sure you've got everything in line to be able to support this. 
um, and then an extra little training refresher as well. Um, some of the lower barrier ones we're still piloting, but we are uh, really excited about some of the results that we're seeing so far, and we're hoping that we can keep rolling it out more broadly. I know, especially manager mode, a lot of the sites are looking forward to that. Um, so I think I just want to wrap this up. I mean, the bottom line is that get a kit really isn't hands off. Um, I think what we really like to get across um, that whether it's for individuals or if it's for sites, you're self testing, but you're not testing alone. Uh, and we think that the close relationships that we've made with different sites and with all of our partners, um, we're trying to scale get a kit across the province has really made the project stronger. And our hope is uh, that it will really inevitably or eventually, I mean, not inevitable, but eventually make get a kit a tool that that really helps people access self testing on Ontario. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks. You're on mute, Eric. Yeah, unmute. For the presentations, we will get to your questions. So up next, we have Robin Robinson. Hi, everyone. My name is Robin Robinson. I'm the MSM HIV testing coordinator at Black Cap, and I'm proud to be a part of Get a Kit. So um, basically, Get a Kit was born out of a research-based um, study that we have been doing at Black Cap to evaluate community-based testing, increasing the frequency of testing among a part of a population, African Caribbean Black GBMSM. So the logic basically is, as I said, um, it's an adaptation of um, Get a Kit and it's making self-testing available at no charge to Toronto residents 16 years and older. And um, basically the portal was launched in March, 2021 and was built on the success of community-based testing pilot as I mentioned earlier. So the intent behind this Get a Kit by Black Cap is basically to increase testing within the ACB GBMSM community, the frequency of testing, the number of persons who know their status, and the number of people who, link, who are linked to treatment and care, all of which contribute to decreasing the HIV um, transmission. Having these accessible are particularly important to reduce these infection rates in the key population. And so it is very important for us as we serve the largest African Caribbean Black community. How do you do the test? It's simple. We have basically three steps with an additional um, step, which is optional. So we complete the registration to see if you're eligible. Log into the Get a Kit by Black Cap account or app and order your HIV self testing kit. In order to do this, we have actually initiated, as Alex mentioned, a two-factor authentication process to ensure that you are actually the person who you are saying who is actually ordering the kit. So you receive your HIV self-testing kit by mail within at least three business days, and you have the option of reporting your results. Our approach is simple. We employ what we call a status-neutral approach, um, meaning that regardless of your results, whether it be negative or positive, it kicks off further conversation with our engagement with the healthcare system, leading to a common goal where HIV is neither acquired nor passed. It is very, can be a very tedious um, process when you actually do a test. And so we have actually created what we call a linkage to care and support services with um, other service providers within different agencies. And we have been intentional in actually identifying persons within this, these agencies who you can contact directly instead of just calling and just being placed on a waiting list. Um, there are a number of potential drawbacks to self-testing, and as we all know, there is a potential that these tests could be used um, forcibly or in, with coercion. There is also the issue of psychological harm, which could occur from receipt of a positive result in the absence of counseling. There is also the insinuation that a negative test could be used to justify condomless sex, which is dangerous if the test is not sensitive or the results are negative, but the person was recently exposed and in the window period. 
It could also be a missed opportunity for STI screenage, linkage care, and counseling on behavioral risk. And so as a result of that, we have actually formed these alliances where persons are able to access services, um, say support program and support services and sexual health clinics, also specialty clinics. One of the things too that we are very proud to be associated with is the fact that even persons who are non-status persons or new immigrants without um, OHIP coverage or federal health coverage, can actually access um, treatment within this, this, this project itself. And we have also added what we call HALCO, which is for um, legal support in the event that a client may need this. Our website is embedded with what we call a, a video, which I will not go into right now, but it's basically an instructional video that is able to give step-by-step -step instructions on doing the test, actually administering the test. We have also ensured that we have a frequently asked question section to our website. Um, we do understand that you may have many questions. And so we have actually covered several of those questions relating to the test device that we use, um, what the project is about, what to do when you get your results. We have also included um, what we call brief reads. And this somewhat gives an idea of what is HIV, how is it transmitted, symptoms, how to get, uh, how it's treated, how it's prevented, and why it should get tested. And we have been updating this as time goes by to be relevant or remain relevant. We have been also intentional in promoting our product, I must say, on different platforms. So we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Grindup. We use constant contact. We have biweekly outreach and education drop-in sessions. We have network partner agencies who also promote on their website and their social media pages and in newsletters and um, press releases. So when you go on Church Street or into the bathhouse and saunas, you'll see things like this sample of our social media promotional material, um, which is now updated because now we have a QR code that is embedded on all our promotional material that will allow easy access to the, um, the site itself. For the next steps, um, we have actually eva we're evaluating feasibility, accept acceptability and uptake in HIV related and HIV related outcomes where we'll share results of the study with varied community organization, partners, and venues that serve ACB, GBMSM, and develop also a research publication. The developed publication is a peer-reviewed manuscript to be shared or used in academic venues, such as Canadian Association for HIV Research, the OHDN, and the North American Conference, which focus on health of African Caribbean, black, gay, bisexual men who have sex with men. Um, for this to be successful, we have to give acknowledgement to the OHDN, University of Ottawa, University of Toronto, Hassel Free Clinic, Maple Leaf Clinic, MedExpress, Bank and Pharmacy, Village Pharmacy, and Halco. And we are always available, so you can reach out to me directly at Robin, r.robinson at blackcap.com or get a kit at blackcap.com. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robin. Uh, up next, we have Randy Davis. On, Randy. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, those of you who don't know me, my name is Randy Davis. I am the sexual health coordinator at the Gilbert Center, an AIDS service organization in Barrie, Ontario. And uh, I don't really have anything formal to present um, with respect to, uh, to get a kid in HIV self-testing. Um, so if you do have questions as I go, um, Greg, feel free to interrupt me uh, because I, I prefer to have more of a, a conversation around um, what HIV self-testing looks like for us on the front line than to, uh, to do a formal presentation given that we've heard all the, uh, the details from Alex and, and a great presentation now from, 
from Robin with respect to uh, um, what Getikit looks like for Black Cap. Uh, we have the same thing. Getikit uh, by Gilbert Center is uh, is also a site that is up and running and and geared to folks in uh, Simcoe Muskoka. And I have to say, I am a huge cheerleader uh, when it comes to to get a kit as a program to get self test kits in the hands of folks who really need them. Um, and I'm 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 really proud to be associated with this program uh, and the folks involved, like like Alex and uh, and Patrick and uh, and Jen. Uh, the weekly or monthly check ins rather are uh, are something that I think is is vital to be able to ensure that. Um, this program is working effectively in our specific region and to address some of the uh, concerns and challenges that we face. Um, and, and I love the fact that Get a Kit has, since its inception, um, and I'm, I, I'm from the Ottawa area, so I, I was familiar with Get a Kit when it rolled out in Ottawa and um, sort of began pushing for, uh, for it to go beyond the borders of, uh, of uh, the National Capital Region uh, very early on. Uh, so I was I was jealous, uh, Adrian, when ACDR got their uh, platform up before the Gilbert Center, but no, no competition. <laughs> but but I have to say, uh, really impressed with the fact that not only does Get a Kit um, provide access for folks who wouldn't necessarily otherwise be comfortable getting uh, getting tested, but the fact, as Alec mentioned uh, in her presentation earlier, that there's such a, a great focus on trying to minimize the barriers that do exist. And we all know when it comes to anything that's uh, related to a technology platform, there are folks that it's going to be hard for them to take advantage of that technology and, and get access. And, and I think it's important to realize that we can't be everything to everyone. And, and Get a Kit, I think, um, recognizes that, but certainly goes, in my opinion anyway, above and beyond uh, other programs to ensure that those barriers are lessened to as much a degree as possible to ensure that the testing is is uh, is achieved for those who uh, who really need it. Um, we launched in June of this year um, with our our Get a Kit, and uh, I think we've had a great response. The uh, the social media aspect that uh, that Alex talked about uh, in our sites and all the sites having access to the uh, the Google Drive for images and messaging to put it on social media, I think has been uh, a great success. I know in, in the calls that I've had with uh, uh, with Patrick and Alex and, and Jen, uh, we talked about the fact that while, you know, we've got obviously a large catchment area in Simcoe Muskoka, we still have a hard time actually reaching those folks because it is a large catchment area. And a number of the folks who have been able to access kits through, uh, through our site actually have had to be moved to um, other regions because they aren't actually within Simcoe Muskoka. They've simply seen the social media posts that we've done on, uh, um, on our sites and have accessed Get a Kit and then realized that, you know, so in the back end, um, they've had to move them to, uh, to sites like, uh, like either Black Cap or ACDR or, or the Ottawa site. Um, so that's something that we're very proud of being able to actually get the message out, whether it's actually helping folks within our region or helping folks within anywhere in Ontario and, uh, and the national capital region that get a kit is available is, is wonderful. Because for me, uh, and I think I can speak for the center as well, it's all about making sure folks have options when it comes to testing. Um, we also opened our own sexual health clinic um, here in April of this year, sort of in conjunction with the, the launch of, uh, of the get a kit platform for us as well. And that also allows us to give folks um, an option to break down some of the barriers that uh, that that happen when it comes to accessing um, home self test test kits, the fact that um, myself and a couple of my colleagues here at the center um, are now certified to do point of care testing, uh, even outside of our clinic hours, has been another method that we've been able to use to get testing into the hands of folks that wouldn't normally otherwise have it. Those that don't have access to be able to uh, um, to register for for get a kit or the I'm Ready program that we're also a part of. Um, we can we can do the, the test for them and uh, provide point of care testing uh, either during clinic hours with our doctors that, that volunteer here or myself and my colleagues doing it during our, uh, our other regular business hours, uh, all by appointment only still with uh, uh, COVID restrictions that we have in place. But uh, but for me anyway, it's it's all about just making sure that there's options out there. And I think get a kit is one of the best options that uh, that we've come across in a very long time. Uh, the fact that now um, COVID self-test kits are available 
through Get a Kit, and I know uh, Get a Kit is looking to expand into uh, other STI testing um, for folks as well, very similar to uh, Get Checked Online in, uh, in BC, which I know is also um, looking to, to move into Ontario. So I think the fact that we've got, you know, we've got I'm Ready, we've got Get a Kit, we've got Get Checked Online, all these resources for folks to be able to actually um, have less barriers to being tested is uh, is huge. That's that's how we chip away at uh, at this epidemic that's been going on for 40 years now, and uh, and try and uh, and bring an end to uh, something that uh, I know is obviously very near and dear to me as someone living with HIV, and I know I can say the same for a number number of other individuals that uh, are on this call as well. I think they would agree with me that uh, you know we've got to get the undiagnosed tested and into treatment and care if we are ever going to uh, defeat this virus. Um, and that's really all I have to say, because um, I, I want to make sure we've got lots of time for Q&A at the end of this session, so I'm not going to take my full 10 minutes. Uh, but I do thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak today, and uh, I look forward to answering some questions at the end. Thank you, Randy. That's quite generous of you. Thanks. Uh, up next, we have Shiva Acharya. Shiva. Hi everyone. Hello. So my name is Shiva Acharya. I'm the HIV educator and the program lead for the uh, this self-testing initiative. I'm going to present on the two-spirited approach of HIV self-testing and the cultural consideration to be accessing the testing kit. Uh, it's just an overview. Detailed presentation will be in our website. Thank you. Next, please. So before talking about the uh, uh, self-testing among the two-spirit people, we need to know who are the two-spirit people. So two-spirit people is the uh, a translation, a native translation that a person who embodies both masculine and feminine spirit. But the term two-spirit is the colonial translation that um, that that's, that's referred to the bisexual, transgender, queer, LGBTQ people of the Indian community which is not true. So this is, we take it as a, a, a colonial translation of two-spirit identity, but which is not great. Two-spirit people, two-spirit is a mainly a cultural role and it's an identity, social identity. That detail um, is you can find in our uh, full presentation in our website. Thank you. Next please. Uh, so we provide the, our services are the two IC like a, from the traditional perspective and the Western perspective. We promote the traditional teaching, medicine, harm reduction supplies, ceremonies, as well as Western harm reduction supplies, including education on HIV, AIDS, HIV, BBI, nursing exchange, outreach, English education, several sex, uh, supply distribution, the referral for PrEP, PEP, and the ART treatment. And we provide both uh, cultural and the Western services. Thank you, next please. And these are the services we provide. We provide the weekly grocery and food support, snacks, refreshment, and supplies and wheel, harm reduction supplies, harm reduction supplies uh, for the uh, both Western and present supplies, outreach, positive living program, STBBI program, self testing. We are going to start soon in the client services, rental support, mental health, cultural ceremonies, client services, local services for medicine and document. And our office is open seven days in a week to the community members. Next, please. So um, we are going to start our self-testing program for next month. And we are, uh, due to COVID, most of the program are on virtual, right? So we have very strong social media presence in our community. So we are promoting the, we are, we are promoting our self-testing on our, our social media platform, our newsletter, and our budget programs. We monthly, we deliver more than 500 copies of our newsletter, along with the cultural teaching ceremonies, STPPI, COVID uh, related uh, resources to our community. And we also have recruited the uh, HIV self-testing ambassadors to promote our self-testing campaign. And a community member who asks for the self the test kit, we self test kit, sorry. We have a two-spirited food delivery team. We deliver, we are going to deliver kit to the kit along with the traditional medicine to the members address. 
And those community members who don't have who don't have access to phone, tablet, and internet, we are going to provide them a phone, tablet, and the internet to eliminate those barriers. Next, please. Thank you. Yes, and. Once uh, at the same time, community member who can say, okay, well, I come to office and get a kit or deliver to our address. The same time, those members who say, okay, I'm in a pretest counseling before the start, before testing, we are providing them a pretest counseling, we are providing them poster counseling. Once they submit a result on demand, the same time, uh, the, once they do their test, if they come to have a result, negative result, we are linking them to the prep clinics, FSX, and Hamza supplies who are negative result and who have who reported a positive result. We are onboarding them in our positive living program. Next, please. And the our positive living, we have very extensive positive living program where we provide food for positive living. That's a weekly warm cooked indigenous meal with a name of an ingredient and there's a benefit. Same time, we have the technology for positive living when we provide the devices, phone, tablet, with the monthly phone, internet bill, internet plan to support members who cannot afford it to access charitable services. At the same time, we have the transportation for the positive living. We provide monthly TTC pass to community members to get access to their charitable services. But at the same time, we have the cozy sleeping for the positive living. We provide new bed, mattress, and health and heavy duty apartment cleaning those who are affected by the bed box and so at the same time we have the warm coffee and breakfast for the hiv treatment adherence we the, the objective of this program is to be connect the community member we provide them weekly breakfast support so that every week they, they come they contact with us and, and make sure that they are having their medicine on time that's the uh, major major objective of this program so next please and then all detailed presentation, like a real, what, what are the our approaches of self-testing, the detailed thing you can find in our website. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, Shiva. Up next, we'll have Adrian, Adrian Betts. Hello there. I'm Adrian Betts. I'm the executive director at the AIDS Committee of Durham Region, or ACDR. I want to start uh, this with three acknowledgments. First uh, is that the team at ACDR lives, works, and plays on the lands and waters of the unceded territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island, uh, and that I'm here presenting for my uh, Get a Kit lead and manager of education, Sarah Laroc, who is uh, otherwise indisposed, and I thank her for her work. And then a huge thank you to Black Cap and to Robin because of your thoughtful, patient um, work. We were able to really piggyback on what you've done and launch so much quicker. So just want to say thank you there. A slide, please, Andrea. Uh, when ACDR began working uh, with Get a Kit, we were in a transition period from our GM State strategy worker role. The fabulous Kira Salib had moved to Action Positif in Toronto, and the equally fabulous Brendan Tehane, our former Totally Outright coordinator, was then hired <clears throat> into the role, meaning our initial foray into Get a Kit was led by our youth ACB and home reduction departments. So the MSM information I'll be presenting is focused on what is coming up. I would like to let you know that we provide uh, Get a Kit in French, English, and Spanish. The Get a Kit test along workshop happened in August. It was a peer led youth event. Uh, and interestingly, there was a lot more interest from community partners about the program than from the youth that attended, which I think is actually quite interesting, quite great. We also had interest, funnily enough, from our PAUSE youth program, HYPE, um, HV Youth Peer Engagement Program, uh, many of whom were in stewardess coordinate relationships, and they see this as another tool in their kit to help keep their partners safe. Slide, please. Uh, spill the tea um, about HIV is a, is a black, uh, a BACO, a Black African Caribbean Community Council outreach uh, and youth led event targeting young BIPOC women in November. Why women of color? Uh, the age of infections in women in Durham region buck the provincial trend in that this group is split 50 50 between older white women in their 50s and higher, which is skewed by an outbreak at a long term care facility in our region and young black indigenous and brown women. Uh, hence the focus on reaching um, black women, young black women. A slide please.
Oh, that's the wrong um, Here we go. Um, so we are going to get get advertisements. You'll see that there. The the, uh, the graphic there is what we had posted online, and we did this for a total of fourteen days, costing us thirty eight dollars, which was remarkable. In that before that we ran the ads, we were getting on average one test a week, um, uh, but when we ran the ads, it bumped up to five tests a week automatically. And if you look at the return here, for every dollar spent, we had one person visit the site, which is fantastic, I think. Um, and then we also provided uh, inquiries directly, telephone inquiries that came in because of the ad directly to the positive care clinic in Whitby for, for uh, blood draw. Um, Durham is a very unique place in that we have urban, suburban, semi-rural and rural areas in our catchment area. We offer harm reduction services in our main office in Oshawa and at four hubs across the region, two in Ajax, one in Oshawa, which are all urban centers, and then one in Cannington, which is semi-rural, and then our mobile outreach service. This reaches folks, um, reaching folks in rural areas, particularly gay, bi, pan, and straight identifying MSM is always challenging. Uh, plus we have an influx of 6,000 migrant workers every year at farms and seasonal resorts. So our migrant worker solidarity team work in tandem with the BACO and MSM outreach um, teams and harm reduction teams to, uh, to reach these people. The team is made up of two Spanish speaking uh, people and one Caribbean person. So it's culturally relevant to the workers who, uh, most of the workers who are bring in, brought in. We're also looking for a, a Thai representative. Uh, so if you know anybody, please send them our way. Um, Using tablets uh, with hotspots, we're able to provide kit registration anywhere to street involved drug users in downtown Oshawa to queer Caribbean migrant workers in Brock County. Slide please. Kits can be developed to addresses by the migrant, to rural addresses by the migrant worker team uh, directly or be ordered for a pickup at ACDL or any of the hubs we staff. So it's about flexibility, about really reducing the barriers uh, of how to access get a kit and how to get a kit into your hands. So using the tablets is a really great way. People within in privacy can, can log on using a hotspot no matter where they are in the region um, and sign up for a kit. And if they don't wanna have it sent to their homes, they can send it to our office or we can send it to the van and the van then will deliver it to a location. Um, so coming up next, we have One Voice uh, is our youth led uh, uh, 2S LGBTQIA BIPOC program, which is creating posters for the libraries and other community spaces for AIDS Awareness Week this year. Our MSM and Youth Outreach programs are launching a sexual health webinar series starting next week with Ontario Tech University and Durham College, which includes self-testing. Um, ULEAD, which is our MSM Substance and Use Reduction Cessation six-week support group, now includes information on self-testing and get a kit. Our totally outright curriculum also includes a session on self-testing and will be kits we offered at the end of the session. I've already covered the van and uh, our online custom order harm reduction covered uh, where you can actually order specific kits or specific numbers of, of supplies is now going to include the get a kit link so when you're ordering the naloxone or safe use supplies you can actually then also sign up for uh, a test uh, and then that could be added to the, to the package you pick up or have delivered um, making it um, much simpler to reach people uh, i guess i get it i said available in french spanish and english and that's it thank you very much next slide uh, so just thanks to my team, Sarah, Lincoln, Brendan, Nathan, Kayla, the Gettykit team, Jennifer, Alexandra, and Patrick, and at the OHTN, Stephen. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Adrian. And thanks uh, to the entire panel. Um, we've received a wealth of good information here uh, crossing a, across um, racial lines because we have heard from Robin around how Black men are uh, dealing with get a kit. We've heard a little bit about the indigenous folks, how they're dealing with get a kit. So I wanna open it up now for Q&A. And I believe that we have a question or questions in the chat. So over to you, Greg. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a question in the chat. And again, encourage folks, if you do have questions now, please feel free to, to put them in the chat and I'll monitor and make sure that they get asked. But we did have one question come up from a participant who I believe is no longer in the room with us. So apologies for the delay to that individual. But um, it was geared towards Robin and it was just a question in relation to the eligibility criteria for accessing uh, Black Caps um, Get a Kit program. Uh, do, would you mind speaking to that a little bit? So um, in order to access the kit, um, first you have to identify as African Caribbean, gay, bisexual, BNSF, right? Um, also, you should be at risk, um, whether you be a substance user or injection drug user, um, should have basically no symptoms of HIV, not on a trial, not on a, you understand, vaccine trial. And um, Normally to be eligible for the kit, you have to be HIV negative at the time when you're off ordering the kit. Okay, all right, thanks, uh, Greg. Uh, I have a question for panelists. I'm not sure this might be for Alexandra. However, um, HIV self-testing has its challenges because not everyone is comfortable to, to test in seclusion. Right. And have you, have any of you had any experiences with someone who have had such fears? And what was your messaging? I can go. Um, uh, we have a, a space on site which we're discussing about uh, being able to then people who, who access the program through curbside. That now we're offering offering on-site services. They could even uh, can possibly take the test in that private space. We're just checking our legal issues to make sure it's it's appropriate or not, so they can actually have immediate access to someone for support, uh, regardless of the test results. Um, and then uh, the the Getikit program itself is pretty attentive in terms of responding to people once they've registered, um, and then asking uh, if what supports they need. Um, it's more challenging, of course, if it's someone who's street involved and they're they're known to us and us alone, uh, and that it tends to be then uh, you know uh, sporadic in that um, what the time they order the kit to the time they actually get the kit may be a longer time because it depends if you've seen them or not you know, up to to a, a hub or to the van, um, and so um, we've had some comments about you know where do I do the test? Where's the safest place for me to do the test? People will assume I'm using drugs instead of, of doing this. And so we've talked about different options uh, about where they can go, um, everything from um, library. But again, we were looking into using our own space as a, as a safe space to do that. Thanks, Adrian. Anyone else who wants to tackle that question? And I'll repeat again, because to me, some people, really have an issue taking a, a self-test in seclusion, right? And they need or they may require additional support. But if someone has reached out to you and said that, you know, I'm scared to take this test, um, what would be your, your messaging to support this person around his or her fears? I can jump in with this one, Eric, because um, it's something that has come across my desk on more than one occasion. Um, and we're fortunate in the fact that, as I mentioned um, when I spoke earlier, myself and, and a few others here at the center are able to actually prov provide uh, point of care testing for folks. So um, when we get it to someone who is apprehensive about doing a self-test themselves, um, we can alleviate that fear by actually having them come in and and we'll do a point of care test for them, which we can we can show is exactly the same kit that they're going to be using um, for a home home self self test kit, uh, and that that seems to help. And and I think, uh, at least from my perspective, this is all anecdotal. I don't have any real evidence to to back this up, um, but I like to think that when folks come in and do a point of care test with me as someone living with HIV, they can actually see you know what somebody living with HIV looks like. It's not the big bad scary. Um, I've actually lost 50 pounds in the last seven months. So that's helped as well. I, I feel and, and look healthier than I have in a very long time. Um, so I think that's, that. and we talked about that in, in the session earlier this morning about uh, peer support and how um, with the home self test kits, we're not seeing the uptake of, uh, of, of peer support um, like we'd hope to see. And I think by being able to actually physically do a point of care test for someone as a peer as well, 
um, is, is a huge benefit to help to smash some of the stigma around HIV. So that's sort of how we get around the, the fear of doing a, a self-test kit. Uh, and I think once they've seen that it's a, you know, it's, it's a very easy, easy test to, uh, to administer, then the fact that it's, for most people, I think it's the scariest thing is just doing the, using the Lancet and then drawing their own blood. That tends to freak people out more than anything. And once you get past that, it's, it, it's great. And I think, again, having that, uh, that peer support and being able to do that, that pre-test counseling, which is just as important as post-test counseling, uh, I think is, uh, is something that really helps to uh, alleviate some of those barriers we talked about earlier as well. Uh, I'll, I'll respond to that as well. Um, so here at Black Cat, what we do, what I do personally is that I do call, make a direct call to these clients. And I really find out how have you, how have you received the kit? Um, do you have any concerns? Is there any support that you need? Because we have um, mental health support here on site. We do have certified testers on site as well. And we do have persons who provide pre and post counseling within our linkage to care support services as well. So um, we're here for them wherever, doesn't matter what, if they want to come in, if they want support. The only thing that we cannot do, we cannot actually do the test for them. OK. All right. Thanks, Robin. And thanks, uh, Randy. Uh, I have a quick question for Adrian, because Durham region covers a really large catchment, and that also includes rural areas. Uh, can you share with us any novel approach or approaches that you use to reach and engage those folks in rural areas and, what's, and what that is like? Uh, yes, I, I can. We're lucky in, in that we recently um, took over the Migrant Worker Solidarity Program um, through Kairos, uh, an ecumenical, ecumenical organization that, that does work with this population. We've been engaged with this work for a long time uh, through our, our, our actual strategy worker. Um, and because um, we've had a small outbreak of HIV within that population before. Uh, and so we've always sort of been engaged with that work and having the, the outreach van and that team sort of come together and then share that resource. We're able to really go into community in, in much more real ways. Like I said in my presentation, the hotspots are, are really making things helpful, bring tablets with us to a farm, for example, that doesn't have Wi-Fi for the workers or to, um, you know, to people who are, who are uh, street involved. Um, in terms of, of specific outreaches towards gay men, uh, one thing that Brendan and I are going to be talking about is, is a squirt. We have a very large um, population of gay, bi, pan, and straight identifying men who have sex with men in the region who live in rural areas who engage in, in, in sex using uh, apps like Squirt. It's the most popular one out here. And we're going to be looking at, at that as, a, as, a, uh, as the next place to head towards in terms of promotion. Seeing what we saw with, with just the ads on on. Uh, Instagram, uh, how it increased over a two week period uh, from one to five tests a week with that population. I think I think it's a safe bet that this is going to be the key promoting the actual opportunity. Um, I think the biggest barrier is going to be for those men, particularly those closeted uh, men, uh, is going to be about accessing the kit, uh, whether they can come pick it up in person uh, or they won't want it mailed to their home. And so we're, again, the van's another great opportunity. We can have a, a, a range of pre determined pickup space uh, mm -hmm. somewhere they're comfortable and we could leave it there by a community health center or the library or, or somewhere where we can leave it. Uh, uh, and the package, as you know, is, is completely innocuous. And so um, we're hopeful that's going to help with that population. Um, and then um, in terms of, of, of networking, there's a, a solid network of, of, of gay men in, in rural areas uh, who are connected to each other. And so I used to live in, in that area and was connected to this sort of dinner party social group, right? And, and, and so connecting to those networks um, gets information uh, out far more, more more effectively than us just sending sort of blanket advertisements when we actually engage champions in rural communities who can then, you know, uh, I told two friends and they told two friends and so on and so on and so on. Um, and so we're hoping that that's gonna, gonna have some, some weight as well. Uh, Brendan's just sort of getting into his stride now. And so we're a bit behind on our MSM outreach with, with Get a Kit, but that's where we're headed. Does that help? 
Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Ad Adrian. I see some uh, questions have come into the chat. Greg, you want to take those, please? Absolutely. Yeah. First, I just wanted to highlight uh, a quick, a couple of comments that were made. One by um, Rick, who was just pointing out that the I'm Ready program has peer navigators as well that are available to folks who are not in, um, not necessarily participating in that program. And also, Caro, um, they commented around how Action Positif is going to have Get a Frit, uh, Get a Frit, Get a Kit in French, en français, um, launching mid November. But we did receive a question. Um, we did uh, receive a question from Dane uh, in relation to, are there any plans or dialogue to get HIV self-test kits into bathhouses or into other kind of sexualized venues? Um, and that could be to any of our panelists. I see Robin. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, presently we're in dialogue with um, Steamworks, um, Club Oasis and Excess to actually first sensitize staff on the testing device that we use and also promote within those spaces as well. Awesome. Okay. Does anyone else uh, want to respond to that too as well? Okay. Oh, sorry, Eric, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Alexandra. Uh, I only wanted to just mention that, like, I think with bathhouse, out, bathhouse outreach, uh, that's, we're also trying to work to make get a kit more flexible. So that's, that's really part of like getting the uh, registration process a little bit easier when you don't have Wi Fi and mobile vans. And so hopefully if other sites are, are starting, they were closed for so long. So I think they were off our <laughs> minds for so long. Uh, but I think once sites start um, getting uh, more comfortable with that outreach, we're hoping that get a kit will be able to support any offer there too. Okay, thanks, and uh, Alexandra. I, I know that Greg had a question that he wanted to go forward with. Uh, here's your chance, Greg. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I was I was interested in so Sim. I've been participating in some of these HIV self test um, studies as a part of my work, and I've seen anecdotally. Um, a lot more interest in communities uh, in our, our service region, which is surrounding London, lots of rural areas. Um, a lot of interest from folks in the rural regions who don't necessarily have the access to point of care testing or anonymous testing. I was wondering if that is a shared experience by anybody else here and how, I mean, I guess, uh, Adrian, you may have addressed how you're approaching that a little bit already, but if other folks are experiencing that as well, how you are going about uh, addressing that. Yeah, it's really key because what if you need to remember it is that if you're in a small community like Port Perry, for example, and you go to the uh, the sexual health clinic for an HIV test, well, the receptionist is your cousin, um, or maybe your neighbor, um, or um, you know, you go to the, to the pharmacy to pick up your meds, and it's your aunt, um, you know, or your employee, or whatever. Okay, it, 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 it's it's really complex twisted relationships and so that anonymity is really appealing okay all right thanks uh adrian i have a, a, a question and i heard that uh robin mentioned earlier that they have uh, mental health staff on board and um so for for folks who may reach out but for others on the panel I know that trauma is associated with an HIV positive test result. And for any of the panelists, do you have culturally safe, trauma-informed staff there to assist and support people from diverse backgrounds? Yeah. And other lived experiences as well. Can respond to that. Um, presently, we do have our trauma-informed care project, Resilient Roots, which is targeting our African Caribbean gay, bisexual men who have sex with men, and that is specific to any form of trauma. It doesn't a trauma doesn't have to be something that is, you know, out of the world or something that is so elaborate. Any form of trauma, whether it be HIV-related or, we actually provide that service. Um, um, we do have a coordinator that basically does the intake, but we do have a specialist um, that basically conducts that, 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 that aspect of the counseling with clients. And it has been very successful so far. 
um, we do have mental health workers that will work with other populations um, not specific to um, GBMSM as well. Anyone else wants to tackle that? Okay. Sure, uh, I, if you don't thanks. Go, go ahead, uh, Adrian. Yeah, it's, it's about the team you surround yourself with. Ultimately, everyone on the team is, is aware of Get a Kit, has had basic training on it, and, and we've all uh, got some degree of, of counseling skills. And so we have people from communities that we serve, uh, who is who we hire and who we engage, and there's peers involved in all of our programs as well. And having peers involved in the work in terms of demonstrating how the, how the test, test works creates that sort of cultural safety piece um, almost immediately, making the, the initial outset of it a bit more comfortable. Um, so youth to youth and, and ACB to ACB and, and sex worker to sex worker, for example. But um, uh, but then the team itself is, is diverse. And that then gives people experience and many, many PHAs on staff who can you know, speak to that, that reality of what a positive test results really means. Thanks okay. for the question. All right, thanks, uh, Adrian. Um, Greg, you said you had another question. You want to go forth with that question before we close out. We have a few minutes before closing out. So let's hear from you, Greg. For sure. Um, yeah, the, the other question I had was in relation to if anybody's had any experience. I know there is a study, or there may be several studies, but I've seen one in particular that's shown higher rates of false positives amongst uh, folks who are taking PrEP. Um, and I was wondering if that's been considered at all within the supports um, or the conversations around um, a positive point of care uh, and confirmatory testing afterwards, um, if that's an experience anybody has. I almost feel like we need Patrick to answer that question. Like I, I, I usually that's exactly Adrian, my cat came to visit you. Um, so we were talking about it in the check-in. Um, so I'll just say uh, that Get a Kit, we used to have PrEP as a part of ineligibility and we've dropped that. We, um, I can't quote any of it here. Patrick is definitely the person that should be answering this, but um, we, we checked in with the literature with what Health Canada would recommend and this all worked out. Um, and so there's messaging now that's like, you still say yes or no if you're taking PrEP and there's messaging that says, you know, if you are in PrEP, you should go back to your PrEP provider for regular testing because it's more than just the HIV test. Um, but otherwise there, there wasn't um, an issue with respect to the device. So um, that's probably not as good an answer as Patrick would have given, but if, if there's any venue for us to like put the answer up on behalf of our team, um, we'd I'd happy, happily get it from him and, and send it your way. Okay, thanks, Alexandra. We have a few minutes before we close and I wanna take the time as you came on screen. You said in your presentation that you kind of concentrate on things that are going wrong. And because you learn so much from, from those ex experiences, can you share one of those experiences that was going wrong and you were able to learn something from it? And Tell us a little bit about what you've learned from that something that was going wrong. I mean, there's so, I wouldn't say that there's so much to pick from, but we had so much great like immediate feedback from sites. It's almost hard to like um, find my favorite. We knew, I mean, I, I guess I'll take the low hanging fruit. Like we knew that um, this idea of like the individual sitting at home doing the registration themselves, like going nav navigating it completely alone and testing alone was only gonna meet so many. People. Um, like we knew that when we were piloting in Ottawa, we were working very closely with Max Ottawa and ACO, um, who were supporting clients in person at, at like the very rare distance COVID events that were that were ongoing. So they really informed um, those early pieces. It, I think um, what we didn't quite know and what we didn't get until we were talking to multiple like different sites in different areas of Ontario was how exactly we were going to shape it so that we could so that the next level down would capture that many more people and the next level down below that would 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 be able to access even more people like it, it I think we really had to um, spend a lot of time asking a lot of nosy questions to sites to make sure that what we were building as the next step would work um, but I mean, it sounds really cheesy, but like 
it was a lot of fun. Like I personally, I was always, my other hat is to work with the clinics and I had such a great time, but like the ASOs, like the whole network was, was always a bit of a mystery to me. And so I, when I got an opportunity to ask a lot of questions, we really, we really uh, zeroed in on it. So, um, and, and I think of all of the adaptations we've made, that one I, is the one that I think makes Get a Kit the strongest. Okay, great. Thanks. Alexandra, you, you opened it and you're closing it. But um, just know, sometimes in this work around self-testing, cheese is good, yeah? Uh, so without further ado, I thank the, all the, the panelists for the rich information that you've brought. Um, I'm sure that there are some takeaways that people who are viewing this um, have received. I certainly have. And so I want to thank, thank each of you individually and collectively, and more importantly, so my co-moderator, thanks again. And we are about that time. So great to see you all on and hope to see you all on Friday for HQ this on Friday, which is the 23rd. And looking forward to see you guys. And I hope you guys, even if you don't make it on Friday, that you'll make it to our other sessions. So appreciate it all. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks.